the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. But today we got to talk about the silent killer. We've been talking about this guy for some time now. The past few days we said all eyes on the Russell, right? Risk on back in the market. What's happening here? Let's let's get right to it. No promos, nothing like that. We jump in here to the two hour. We can see nothing but consolidation. It, it, it's like Derrick Rose shuffling back and forth, playing defense back and forth. You're not going north. You're not going south, but you're not getting past that brick wall of defense. You know, I'm talking about D Rose in his prime. So when we look at this, you start to see the visual. We start to see, well, what's happening in Q? It was our, it was our, you know, our workhorse carrying the market since January. Everyone said tech is the only thing running. But then we look a little bit deeper and we start to see the Dow. Great recovery right into resistance. We mentioned kind of consolidating as well, pushing down, but but holding up. Okay. ES. Now, ES, I'm going to tell you right now. ES looks finger licking, slap your mama, call me daddy good. Beautiful. Okay. ES looks fantastic consolidating at these highs as well. But again, why were we talking about the Russell? This is it. The Russell 2000, your smaller caps. When the Russell runs, we all pay attention. You look back at what happened, you know, January into early February, the Russell went bonkers, straight up. Nothing, <laughs> nothing could stop this thing, right? Straight up. Well, since this run has begun, the Russell has been doing not too much, right? The Russell gives us a good viewpoint of risk on. When investors want to dump money into riskier assets, what does that mean? When investors are putting risk on and they're attacking the market, they're not being as passive. They're putting money in to taking money out and keeping it in cash. We, we get a better perspective of the tolerance in the market and the potential for upside. Okay, so when we look at this, you get the breakout. What are these levels? The dotted line is a 200 moving average on the weekly. And then the solid line is a 200 moving average on the daily. You have held below the 200 moving average on the daily. Okay, the dotted, the, the, the whole line right there for essentially since, you know, beginning of 2022, going back to March, you know, even like January. Not make it do, do, do your DD. Okay, the weekly, we've been holding below this since essentially March when we had the banking issue. And when the banking issue hit, we had this major concern of people pulling their money out of the market and want to keep cash on hand. And so that's when we saw real fear. But we saw, you know, tech names, NVIDIA, Microsoft, some of the others go crazy. But for the most part, a lot of the smaller caps, PayPal, Square, Roblox, Dutch Bro, I'm just naming some off the top of my head, CRM, Crowd, they're not smaller names. But they're not the, the heavy hitters like Apple, Amazon, Tesla, etc. NVIDIA. We didn't see those names go crazy. But as of recently, we have seen the momentum shifting across the board. And what did we say here? When we start to get this push above the monthly, things could get interesting. That's what we've been saying. Yesterday into today, what, what were we screaming here? Opportunity. Opportunity opportunity that's what's the the mantra here right taking advantage of the opportunity that's happening because all we're doing here is mounting previous highs over and over making higher highs and higher lows this leads you to believe right now we are in a bull trend since essentially january very strong behavior now before we get into anything else you know go over any stock picks i'm loving because I, I got a few here uh, i would stick around for them i'd ask you to do two things consider liking and subscribing right only if you get something out of the video. If you don't you think this is helpful, I recommend unsubscribing and just, you know, finding someone else that suits what you're looking for. I try to be as transparent and as honest as possible. Yes, the, the thumbnails may a little bit, be a little bit clickbait, but inside the videos, you will never catch me lying once. I give you my honest, transparent views and opinions. If you're interested in Discord, getting involved with traders like-minded that are trading all day, understanding how we trade, why we trade, opportunities throughout the day as well take a look at discord this is not a signals group and it's going to make you rich quick this is not what it is okay i tell people all the time if you don't want to put in work you don't want to start you know journaling taking accountability for what you're doing this is not the place for you okay but that being said we have a lot of free content the newsletter is down below that's 100 percent free we pay for that out of our own pocket 
The Twitter, even today on Twitter, said cloud names are howling for me. Lots of room reminds me of Snowflake, and we all know how that went, right? CrowdStrike and CRM. CrowdStrike, we'll go over that. You ended up holding above the 200 weekly, which is what we really like, and that's the buying opportunity there. And then on CRM, you ended up pushing, as you can see, we're targeting 213.3. What did we say here? Again, you hit target within the next two hours. You hit the target almost perfectly, 213.3. So again, lots of free content. I try to have as much as that possible. Those links are down below to check it out. So going into tomorrow, you know, how are we feeling? How are you feeling? Now, I want to talk about the past two days before we talk, before we talk about the next two days. The past two days. Well, what have we seen? Okay, so if we come here on the four hour, in my opinion, what, what, what is going on here? Okay. So if we just, you know, you can grab the trend and really it's even, it's better than this, but this is where you have to grab it. So you can see right now, clearly forming higher lows, clear as day, clearly forming. Okay. And this is a NASDAQ trying to break to the upside. 14.7 is the next big level over that. We, we have quite a bit of room. You can go to the weekly and see it's going back into roughly 14.9, 15,000. And I'm going to tell you right now, I believe that's coming very soon. Explain why though. So we go into something like the ES, and I think this gives you more more answers. So the ES, I'm gonna go to a shorter time frame, something like the hourly, so you can see. And this is wild to me. So we get that pushed and get our initial test of around 13, 13, 10, 13, uh, 4, 4, 43, 10, 43 flat, right? We get that touch, push down. The big level right there is the previous highs from August 13 to 8, roughly. We push down. So when we when we come into a resistance, we always expect to get projected. We never, I never go into a trade saying, okay, that's resistance, even though that's my target and where I'm trying to trade this. I'm gonna expect us to blast through it and go to the next target, right? I always expect there to be sellers waiting for me when we get there. Okay. So when we look at this, what happens now? You can see, in my opinion, it gets start to get very interesting. So I want to zoom out really quick and show you the, where this level stems from. It was also in the newsletter. So I do recommend a hundred percent checking that out. Let me go really quick back here. You can also see, I'm trying to grab it specifically so you can see, let me zoom back. And I want you to be able to see where these levels come from so you can mark them for yourself. So you can actually start to see right here. You get that little bit of a trend flip right there around 14 to eight. And then you can actually come back a little bit further on the daily and you can draw it out a little bit further where you see that support right there as well. And then you also have the swing. So you have this whole area of just massive, massive support. Okay. But really this like 42.9, 42A area is massive. It stems all the way back here going to 2021. So when we zoom back in, we, we look here in the five minute, the action that's happened here over the past like two days, we'll go to the 15 minute to give you a better visual. And you can see here, that we just mount this 4270 range and it's in the newsletter that from this past week as well right you just cannot break down you you continue to hold now in my opinion if we look at es and we look at nasdaq based on price action supply and demand and, and the way we've moved the downside here was all in favor for shorts what does that mean you moved up with a straight shot what is that yeah, that gives you a visual of saying that there's not too much support here because you just shot th straight through it. You didn't create supply or demand levels in between. So getting back down to roughly, you know, 42.55 should have been relatively easy because there's not very many orders stacked in here either. Okay, so that's something we need to understand. And you can go to book map and this is the link is down below so you can check them out. But you can see here, even on the downside today, was there any really big orders to when you started, you know, getting bought back up here? You can see there's no real big orders, you know, that are supports. You have a little, about 300 lots that sat there all day, basically at 4270. And you can see, but most of these are just small orders where buyers are just slowly getting in. You can see the icebergs where they're stepping in, stepping in. But there's just no orders sitting on the book because these aren't very big key levels. Okay? It's worth mentioning. If you really look at the action of where we've sat and where we end the day over the past, you know, few days, these have been the quote unquote bearish days, the retracement days, as you can, you can see lots of buying here at the end of the day. You can see though, you're ending the day almost every day at highs of 4290, that key level. It's like a magnet pushing us back to that level. Now, I personally believe you want to get above this. But when we look a little bit deeper, you look at some of the volume that's happened here on SPY. Let's just 
really quickly look let me refresh i recommend yahoo finance for looking at volume it's just so simple and easy um, but you can see the past two days have been downside and consolidation 65 million 57 million volume the upside was double 110 88 91 fantastic so what are we seeing we're seeing breakout volume to the upside and consolidation volume and low volume during consolidation and the downside here okay and what is basic, you know, fundamental fundamentals tell us or technicals as well. Declining volume at a resistance as you consolidate there or as you consolidate in a bull flag or an ascending triangle or whatever for continuation, declining volume is always bullish or it's always a, a affirmation sign for that continuation in that specific direction. Okay, so again, that's what I see there. But on top of that, the Russell. And I want to go over here to show you on uh, TradingView because it's just it's an easier setup to show you. I want you to really visualize what's kind of taking place here. Okay, it is this is absolutely, um, it's absolutely absolutely wild to me. Okay, so this is the daily time frame on the Russell. And I told you yesterday we we tested that 200 weekly on the on the uh, the Russell. We shot down back to the, the daily level. We held and we pushed right through it. So what happened here? We go to the, you can see, this is why these are the only moving averages we like to use. You push up, perfect, reject, come back down. You hold above and slingshot back up. Absolutely gorgeous. The Russell, I mean, the Russell wants to go and you're seeing volume flow back in. You know, getting a visual of the IWM, I mean, look at the IWM, how it's just respected this over and over and how it's breaking back above as we speak. It continues to impress. And even here on the IWM, you can see you mount the 200 weekly as well. Very, very impressive price action continues to play out. IWM here as well. Boom, boom, boom. This is textbook. What's happening here? Okay. So again, I'm not trying to convince anyone. This is my opinion. If you have any counter arguments, I would love to go over them. Um, as far as fundamentals, people keep asking me, you know, you know what about the T-bills and this and that? I, I went over that on Sunday's video and a little bit in yesterday's video. The market is taking it bullish right now. It is what it is. Don't shoot the messenger. It's my opinion. Until we get data that drives inflation back up and or, you know, something that really pushes us to the downside as far as bad, bad news, like that's what it took back in 2022. I'm just saying I have all eyes and all hands on deck for the upside potential and upside possibilities across the board here, right? That's why I love these setups, I love these plays, and ultimately I love where I believe we're going. Now, really quickly, we're gonna some quick fundamentals here that's going on here. The DXY, once again, um, you, you had a decent day where you tried to break out. We continue to reject, reject on this trend line. We've been covering this for the past five, six days. So still in the downtrend, probably gonna push back down lower. Also, Going into what's happening with yields, you're seeing a little bit of love here. They're holding above the 200 on basically all of them. Worth mentioning, we want to see the 10, 5, and 2 start to decelerate and slow down, okay? That'd be healthy for the market. We want that 10 and 30-year inversion to also start to head down. You're not inverted. You're at 95% inverted, but you're, you're still dangerously close. And usually, when again, we all know when you get above you know, a per full inversion, that's when you start to get concerned, right? So we're not there right now. Also, too, I will go in and I will say oh, really quickly, oil, a lot of oil questions here. Everyone's asking me about what I think about energy with the OPEC deal. Again, for oil, I've been watching the 200, S, the 200 simple moving average, the, the moving average in general, regular, regular moving average, right? On the weekly, you've been bouncing over and over at this level. Personally, as oil sits at these levels, this has to be taken as bullish for the market. Because as long as oil stays down, we've seen the energy reports, we've seen the inflation reports, they continue to look better and better as long as the oil stays lower. Okay, that's how we're operating. That's what I like. That's what I'm looking at there. Gold as well, kind of just trickling down. So not too interested there. Favorite names on the market. Let's go run through it real quick. Um, I keep saying Tesla. I've been mentioning Tesla. You can go back and look May 31st, June 1st. Go look. That ship has uh, officially sailed. You mounted the 200 daily. You're pushing crazy. I think you're going towards, I think Jay has 226, but I really think you're going towards around you know, 230, 232. I think it's highly possible. Um, second favorite name, I told you guys this list, it's not gonna change. 
Amazon, I believe you're going to hit 132, 130 as well. A lot of love coming in here. I love Amazon. If we look at XLY consumer discretionary, big names in that Tesla and Amazon, um, it's going absolutely crazy. And you're breaking out here once again. You have a daily gap on this at 165, which is absolutely crazy, uh, but getting a lot of love. Uh, my next one is going to be Netflix, but Netflix has to get above the 200 SMA on the daily massive or on the weekly. I'm sorry. Massive, massive level. You're rejecting there over and over, right? We had a few trades where you broke above, we took some money, but you need to get the hold. If you can hold above that on the daily time frame, I believe you have crazy amounts of room. Short-term targets here on Netflix, I'm going to tell you right now, I'd be targeting locally around 456. And then after that, you have a daily gap at 506. I'm not going to jump ahead of myself, but this is ultimately what I'm looking at and I'm targeting. If, if you get above the 200 estimate, I think it's going to be an easy ride up into the 450s. Personally, my opinion, don't shoot the messenger. Now, Google is the last one on the list that I just absolutely love. Um, it's breaking out, obviously. It continues to look good. And these are names I continue to mention every day. Okay. Those are my like top four. Give me the update. Now, there's a few names that are creeping on this list. Okay. And I want to continue to try to give you some, some new names. And I'll give you a lot of updates on Twitter. So I really recommend you follow there so you have the charts. I like these crowd names, uh, cloud names, right? Crowd tricks on the mind. CrowdStrike is holding the 200 SMA on the weekly. You're holding it very well. You look really good, okay? You had that bad earnings call to where you pushed down, but I still think you, you want to push back up, okay? Very similar to what we saw with Snow, okay? Very similar. Uh, very similar name. I love what I'm seeing here. You know, you have names like ZS going crazy as well. Number two, CRM. CRM started, okay? I, I posted this on Twitter. I posted it in Discord, okay? So you have those as, as well. You already hit target number one around 213.10, and now you're trying to push up. You have that daily gap up at roughly, I believe, where's that daily gap? Let me make sure I don't want to lie to you. Uh, roughly 217. That could hit really quick, especially with a breakout on indexes. So keep it on your, you know, your watch list. Definitely like what I'm seeing there. Okay. Those are some two big names. I'm really, really liking. Runner up though in a sector would be the semiconductors. You're seeing a little bit of love coming to AMD. NVIDIA could start to get some love. But names that I'm really liking lean more towards LRCX. AMD's already began, began its run, so I'm not super interested there. If you can start making higher highs on NVIDIA, I'll get interested. But for right now, LRCX is the one that I'm more interested. I called this out also in Discord today around 606. Um, and, you know, you, you, you had a good day. You had, you had a good push here. You're trying to hold. You're trying to push back up. Target would be around 619, 620. That's where I'd be looking for us to go. Now, the last name I'm going to mention, and this is has a little bit of time on it, okay? It's not happening yet. Everyone keeps asking about Boeing, right? Everyone loves, I don't know why everyone loves Boeing. It's crazy. So Boeing, and, and I want to get everyone ready because I, I want everyone to know when this happens, you know, I, I try to let you know. Boeing has been consolidating for essentially since December. We, we caught this run. You all, you all remember if you were here back in November, December, okay? Now, if we look at where we're at, this is the 200 SMA on the weekly. You have been below this level since 2020, okay, since COVID, right? Grinding below. You are officially trying to break above. Boeing has done really well when it comes to new deliveries, sales, and expectations of growth. I love what they're doing. If they can mount above this 200 SMA on the weekly, I believe you have a lot, a lot, a lot of room. You will most likely work and push towards 230 once that happens. Longer, longer plays on Boeing will probably be on the top of my watch list, at least dated on Boeing as well. 200 SMA is massive though, so we need to be watching that. And this is a dated position and I'm, I'm not interested in it yet. I'm watching it vigilantly. And if we look as well, you can see you just got rejected there as well two days ago. So again, we like this. You got a nice dip. Bought right back up because buyers are actively pursuing this.